Our reporter Martin Dunkelmann is visiting the Neu-Ulm University of Applied Science. Here, he wants to meet the people who can uncover lies using a simple voice recording. My name is Ayman Abdallah and the earth is flat. That's a lie, of course, but I'm just practicing a bit to see if the latest truth software will catch me out. The project is called VACE, Voice Analysis for Customer Emotions. We're meeting the project leader, Professor Dr. Heiko Gewald. For about a year and a half, he and his team have been researching software that uses artificial intelligence to recognize emotions when people speak. How does it work? Good to see you. Yes, I'm also incredibly happy to see you. Was that a lie or not? Can you judge that already? Either you really are happy to see me, or a very good liar, one of the two. How did you come up with something like this? Have you been lied to so often? My fascination is actually not so much around the lying, it's much more about the human voice itself. Because the human voice carries more information than the speaker is actually aware of. For example, love, hate, anger, lies. The result of their research is a software that can check normal voice recordings from video or telephone calls for their truth content. Previous techniques for recognizing lies have up to now been very costly and complex. In 1935, the first machine lie detector was developed, the polygraph. It claimed to identify lies by interpreting body signals such as rising blood pressure, pulse or breathing rate. However, the method has been considered unscientific since the 1970s. A more modern idea is the use of MRI scans to find the truth. Here, brain activity is recorded so that conclusions about the truth of the statement can be drawn from the active brain regions. The problem, however, is that the test can be easily fooled. And even artificial intelligence is not really a novelty. In 2006, the silent talker was the first AI that was supposed to filter out lies through subconscious facial expressions. But this technology is also complex and not yet accurate enough. VACE analyzes only the voice. Tests conducted by the Neu-Ulm University of Applied Science so far have already proven 85% accurate. Will it work for Martin too? Can AI catch him out? The test setup is pretty simple. All we need is a laptop, a microphone and a conventional voice recording program. I was thinking there'd be a huge computer cabinet because they always say that about artificial intelligence. Is that it? Yes, for now. In purely physical terms, Martin is neither wired up nor connected to any device. All he has to do is babble away, and he can definitely do that. We need to find a topic now where you really have strong feelings, strong emotions. I'm someone who absolutely cannot drink milk, for example. I can't get milk down me. Do you know where that comes from? From kindergarten. In the GDR days, I was forced to finish my milk at the kindergarten table and I didn't want to. So at some point, I drank it and vomited it all over the table. And since then, I don't drink milk. I really don't like drinking it at all. You could use something like that, couldn't you? Strong emotions there. Yes, that's ideal. So he hates milk. That'll be our subject. Should we abolish cow's milk and only allow milk alternatives? Martin prepares himself. He now has to argue in favor of cow's milk, although he actually detests it. So he's about to speak completely against his inner conviction. Will the machine notice that something's not quite right here? It's very difficult to think up arguments because your head always wants it the other way round. That's a bit tricky. Now I have to say all that into the microphone and convey it well. I don't know if I can. I think I can lie quite well into a camera. I'll have to see how it goes. The software will show just how well he can lie. To make the speech as emotionally charged as possible, Martin is now paired up with an opponent. Hello, so you're my counter-argument. That's right. In pro and con debates like this, the artificial intelligence has been trained for months. It has been studying, so to speak. With lay people like Max, the algorithm works very well. But how does it work with a TV reporter? Professor Gewalt believes in his software, but Martin also makes him a little nervous. 
Martin's a bit special in this respect because he is, of course, a trained speaker. And of course, our software is not trained for that. Because we trained with people like you and me from the street. If I have someone who can control that very consciously, we don't quite know yet what the outcome will be. He's putting the pressure on a bit here. <laughs> well then, make an effort. Let the lies begin. Okay. okay, should cow's milk be abolished? Well, I would say no, because cow's milk has a tradition in Germany and traditions are very good, and I think they should be preserved. Uh -huh. The algorithm doesn't understand a word. It only interprets the voice colour. In other words, signals such as pauses and delays, pitch interjections, fluctuations or speed. The AI behind it recognises 40 such speed patterns and thus calculates whether Martin is speaking for or against his own conviction. Uh, it's, it's all about taste. Uh, the question of taste is also very important. OK, cow's milk also tastes like nature. When you take a glass of milk from the fridge in the morning and drink it, you know it's delicious milk from the meadow, it's healthy and natural. Yeah, right. Cow's milk is really delicious. Our host is lying through his teeth. After about two minutes, the homage to his favourite drink is in the can. Too fast, was it? That was a bit fast. I'm curious to see what that means for the evaluation. The speech was hectic, but quite convincing, at least for us humans. The professor edits the speech recording and sends the sound file to the computer center. Did Martin tell his lies well? We'll find out in a moment. But first we take a look at the computer center ourselves. Here is the AI that will evaluate Martin's speech. Professor Fauser was an instrumental in developing the algorithm. So this is where all the magic happens. You could say that this system is equivalent to more than 1,000 powerful workstation computers. Awesome, and yet still so compressed somehow. This AI is an artificial neural network, the artificial replica of the human brain, so to speak. In humans, almost 100 billion neurons combine and transport information through our brains in such a way that sound waves can become speech. In artificial neural networks, on the other hand, the neurons consist of computer code and are connected to each other with a lot of mathematics. This artificial network is much simpler in design, but can also be trained. With each training run, the connections between the individual neurons change until the AI delivers reliable results. Turning speech patterns into formulas. Did that work in Martin's case? Back to our test. The moment of truth, literally. Was Martin able to convince the AI of his love for milk? To what extent did his lies convince the AI? Oh, a fantastic result. 2%. Very good. You're such a bad liar, my friend. Du hast Du hast so schlecht gelogen, mein Freund. <laughs> it says 2%. 2% what? For or against? 2% that you actually spoke from your own conviction. So 98% of the time you didn't speak the truth. That means I lie so badly. That means your software works really well and means I'm a lousy liar. Are you happy? Um, I'm happy with the result, and I'm happy you're such a bad liar. <laughs> For the future, there are many possible applications, such as customer service or call centers. Insurance companies could filter out fraudsters when reporting claims. Doctors' surgeries could evaluate patient conversations and, if necessary, follow up more precisely if symptoms are downplayed or exaggerated too much. The Neu-Ulm software is not yet in use. Research will continue for many years with one clear goal, to bring its accuracy closer to 90%.